that's at the end of this little uh, lesson, but really to understand really when you should use Kafka and when you should rely on standard messaging. And that's really the key to this lesson. If we look at Kafka, Apache Kafka, which is a high speed um, pub sub message broker, typically used for streaming architecture versus something like ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ, what I'm calling standard messaging. The very first difference we notice is with the payload itself. Typically with Kafka, these are very, very small key value pairs that are sent across a stream. And that value typically is a, just an atomic value. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't contain a large JSON object or large XML, but typically it's an, a very small atomic value. Whereas with standard messaging, we typically do have those very large payloads. For example, creating an order which may have 45 different attributes, for example. Now, where they really differ though, and I'm going to actually start these running because now we can actually see the animations of what's really happening here. Because we notice with Kafka, and let's kind of bound these together here. Um, with Kafka, notice that we have really an unbounded continuous flow of data. In other words, data, these key value pairs, are just being continually streamed out to a topic. Whereas with regular messaging, we do have distinct bounded message. A message is created, it's sent, it's received by a receiver or a consumer of that message. And so that's really one of the first inherent differences we see when we start this ball rolling with the streaming aspect. And the other one is that with Kafka, we can get throughput up to around 1 million messages a second. Now that's fully tuned, fully clustered with 10 byte messages. However, we can achieve upwards to 100,000 um, fairly typically with Kafka. But with regular messaging, our throughput, given apples to apples, knowing that Kafka uh, persists messages all the time, our throughput can, is usually up to about 4,000 messages a second. Um, with non-persisted messages, we can get upwards to around 10, um, maybe 11 fully tuned. But we're looking at those kind of throughput ranges, and that's another significant difference. When we take a look at should I be using Kafka or should I be using standard messaging, if we need these kind of throughput rates, uh, that's where Kafka really comes into play. Now, the other thing is just the usage of data. Kafka is really good for what I like to call operational data. <clears throat> this is data basically that is about the operations of your system. So in other words, metrics data, um, different kinds of maybe auditing, logging, uh, uptime metrics, you know, these kind of things that tell us about the health and activities going on within the system. However, uh, regular standard messaging is good for transactional data. And what do you mean by transactional data? These are our user requests. Requests. In other words, uh, the creation of, of a, a, an order, the placing of an order, the validation of a trade. You know, these are the types of things that are transactional in nature. And that's not to say that you can't use Kafka for these. However, noticing that unbounded continuous flow, if we have 55 attributes within a particular payload, that's going to be very difficult to do within Kafka, whereas in messaging, this is fairly standard. Now, the other core difference that I want you to be aware of between Kafka and standard messaging is the kind of topology supported. Kafka only supports a publish and subscribe type of topology. That's where the producer sends a message across a stream to a topic within Kafka that is then consumed by different consumer groups. And this is the only model currently supported by Kafka, and this is specifically within 1.0. However, um, with regular standard messaging, we have three different options. We can do point-to-point -point messaging, leveraging cues. And so, in other words, I know exactly who's going to be consuming this message uh, as opposed to just the publish and subscribe. And so, I'm guaranteed that one and only one consumer in that consumer group is going to be receiving that message. I can also do the same thing as Kafka and do publish and subscribe as well. And then I also have the option of an exchange to publish. And this is implemented usually through AMQP, Advanced Message Queuing Pro Protocol, implemented through RabbitMQ, for example, where the producer sends to an exchange, which then is routed through different bindings to different queues, which then load balance consumers then pick up.
So you can get more information about Kafka by going to two different sources. The Apache Kafka open source Apache page at kafka.apache.org is a good place to see all sorts of information and documentation. Uh, the Confluence site is the other place to go. There's a lot of information there about what Apache Kafka is. And also, if you go to the resources page, which I've included the link here, there's lots of videos and white papers also to really describe what Kafka is and how it works. So this has been Lesson 2, Event-Driven Architecture, How Apache Kafka Differs from Standard Messaging. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Um, thanks for listening to Software Architecture Monday, and stay tuned at developer to Ar So after the showing the essence of uh, Kafka messaging, what exactly is the difference between a standard messaging and Kafka? Let's come back to this problem where we started. Let's try to, we ran the uh, Zookeeper. We also understood uh, why Zookeeper is needed. We also ran a standard Kafka. Now let's try to run this one. And let's see what happens now. We did a walkthrough of this published subscriber. We also did a walkthrough for Kafka binder. We also saw how to use the standard message channels. Now we are starting our Spring Boot application. Right? So far, so good. Let's see. Okay. Our uh, Spring Boot application has started. Now what we're going to do is that we will have a REST controller publish our drug business object, which we have persisted, right? Uh, let's go a little deep into our business objects, right? It's an entity and I'm persisting that. How I'm persisting that, I have given the application of properties here. Uh, Postgres is my database. And you have to note one more thing. I'm using update. That means I need not worry about the, the queries, right? It's going to take care of that by itself. Let's talk in another video of how exactly to go more deeper to this. But for now, we'll only understand that we are going to use the messaging system to publish our business object, which is drug in this case, right? Drug is having only two fields here. One is ID and one is name. I kept things simple just for, just for understanding purpose. So in the drug publisher, I'm going to use a message channel. And uh, as soon as I say publish drug AVI, the post mapping, I'll supply the body of the postman, the details of the drug. And then this will be published as a JSON, right? I'm using a request body. And the subscriber, we are going to receive this message. That's all we are going to do in this episode. We are not going to go more deep into the Kafka system yet.